So today we're going to look at my automated Outlook signature script. You're totally free to use it. You can customize it all you want. If you need any help actually customizing it towards your environment, you can drop a comment and I'll, I'll see where we can help. Um, but basically this script uses uh, is using group policy as a logon script. And as the user logs on, it'll pull details from their user account from Active Directory and build a HTML. As the script just uses HTML and CSS, you can just customize it how you like to make the signature look how you want. Uh, what we'll do now is we'll basically just download it, we'll go through the script, and then I'll show you how to set it as a logon script if you don't know how. So there's a link in the description to this page, just click releases, and then just download the latest source code, currently it's version 2. And then what we'll do is we'll just extract that folder, and then we'll go through the script. So. There's an example of what the signature looks like and then a few bits and bobs from GitHub. But you just want to right click the signature and open it with whatever editor you want and we'll go through it. So I have opened up the script in Visual Studio Code. If you open it in your preferred editor and try and follow along. What we'll do is we'll break the script down into its, its main components. So the first section, which is line 1 to 32, is just the configuration of the, the properties from Active Directory and where the, script's gonna get, uh, sorry, where the signature is going to be saved. So in this case, its folder location is where we're saving this, uh, the signature once it's created. And they're going to be stored in App Data Microsoft Signature. We do a quick test. If that folder does not exist, create it. And then what we're doing here is we're getting their username and we're using that to get to find them in Active Directory. And then we've got access to all of the properties to use. The properties we use in this particular version of the script is their name, job title, Home form, which is used for direct dial, if you don't have, uh, so in, in this case, there is the telephone number down here, which is the phone number of, let's say, an entire site. However, we're using home phone as a direct dial for a singular user. So you might not even need that. These tend to be the properties here that are unique per user. And these are the ones that are, of all potentially unique per user, may not be so you may have one address so you may end up hard coding all of these um, which you know will work absolutely fine same with the website so you may have if you've only got one website and it's going to apply no matter who the user is you could hard code that there one thing you will also need to do is put a sort of company logo or something in a public area a public space where you can link directly to it for use in this in this script so that's the first chunk Essentially, it's it's just basically getting the properties and putting them in variable names that are easy to use. Um, and that's all this bit does. So what we'll do now is we'll talk about the actual signature creation. So the signature section, although there's quite a few lines to it, is actually quite simple. It's basically just a block of HTML. It can have CSS in here, but for the sake of simplicity, I've taken that out to leave a bare bones template in for yourselves. And you just need to basically add any HTML in here or CSS you want to to adjust it. But how this works, it basically just takes those variables from earlier that we got from Active Directory and puts them in line in the HTML. What's a little bit more unique about this script compared to other scripts of a similar nature is if something's missing, such as a direct dial or a mobile number, those entire lines, even in the HTML, are completely taken out. That way the script still looks natural when something's missing. So if someone forgot to put an address in in Active Directory, the block wouldn't be just sitting there with a big blank space, it would move all of the other stuff up and it would still look normal. So the final section basically just gets the file location and whatnot and outputs the file and then we do a small little tweak to some registry entries for Outlook to basically get that signature file and make it their default signature in Outlook. Uh, one thing to note is that in the first time a user logs on and opens Outlook, if they're a new user, they will not get the signature the first time. A new user will get the signature the second time they've logged in once they've had Outlook open at least once. Um, that If I ever fix that, it'll be in the next version. And that's pretty much the script itself. And in the next section of the video, we're going to cover how to put it as a logon script in group policy. Back over on your domain controller then. Now I'm on my domain controller and I've got a copy of the signature script. You're going to open group policy. In my case, the most appropriate place to have this group policy is in my staff users OU where all my users are. Uh, it may obviously differ for your environment, but if you right click the OU where you're going to locate it and do create a new GPO and link it here, 
I'm just going to call it Outlook Signature. Then you need to right click and edit the policy. Under the user configuration section, click Policies, Windows Settings, Scripts, and then double click Log On. Under the PowerShell Scripts tab, click Show Files. And what we need to do is just make a note of that folder there. So I'm just going to take a copy of that up to Policies, right click Copy. Then we need to go to this PC, C, Windows, Sysvol, which is there, then Sysvol again into the domain. And then if you just paste that on the end of here, oops, with a backslash. So you want to be going to backslash policies, that big long number, and then use it, press enter. Then in scripts, log on. And then we want to minimize that, grab this, and drop our script in this area. Continue. Then you want to click add, browse, and you should see your generate signature script in there. Okay. So all we did there was get around the security to actually drop it in that folder because it won't let you do it unless you actually visit it in C Windows Sysvol. So now that we've done that, apply OK. And next time the user logs on, they'll get a copy of the signature. So what we'll do is I don't have Outlook on my VM, so I will just run the script manually on a VM and I'll show you the output. Right, so I'm going to run the script now, which will be the equivalent of logging in. And then if I just head over to App Data, Microsoft Signatures, and then I open up my signature file. You will see that it has built my random fake signature. And this is the genetic sort of template that's in there. So this can obviously be all be edited. Feel free to comment on the video if you would like some help modifying this for your environment but that is basically the gist of a quick overview of the script itself and how to implement it uh, i did have a few questions on the forums at edugeek on how to do it and i had a lot of messages about it so i thought a quick video would help those with a, a relatively basic knowledge in group policy and html and css uh, but if you need any help just stick a comment and i'll see what i can do thank you very much